today on Inspiration for Today. Join Pastor Phil King as he shares a now word that will speak to your spirit. It was gone, hallelujah, in an instant. Why? Because you came into contact with the Logos of God. Hallelujah. In that moment, in that instant of time, she was changed because she had an encounter with the Logos, the Word, hallelujah, that became flesh. How many of you have had an encounter with the Word today? How many of you have had an encounter with the Logos of God? Oh, praise God. I tell you what, I've got to shout. word there was a prophecy in Micah 5 2 says Bethlehem Ephratah though you are small among the cities yet out of you shall come forth a king whose days are from everlasting I want to speak to you about <laughs> the eternal word and as we look up and as we think about today how God created the universe in the beginnings God created the heavens and the earth and we think about how that also in John chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him was not anything or nothing made that was made. Here today I want you to think about how that history was changed how that God in the beginning, when the Bible speaks in the Hebrew of the heavens and the earth, God creating the heavens and the earth, it actually is speaking about the universe. When it speaks about those words, heaven and earth, it means that God created the universe in the beginning. Now, before the universe, outside of matter, energy, space, and time, we see in the beginning, you see that light in the very beginning? How many of you know that Jesus is the light? In him was life, and that life was the light of men. So I want you to think about how that, that the word, the logos, now when you spoke of the logos to the Greek mind, they understood it meant the communication, this communication of God to us, that the Father wanted to communicate to us the reality of who he really is is and so how can we understand this God who created the universe how could we understand the God who created the vastness of the millions and billions of stars in this universe and then also what they found is over 97 percent of the universe is dark energy and matter that is actually pushing the universe out and making it accelerate as it's going out. And I want you to think about the God who was before matter, energy, space, and time. Dr. Hughes said when he went to speak at NASA, they told him, they said, you can't use the name God when you teach here today. And he said, well, I'd really like to use the name God. He said, no, you can't. And he said, well, how about if I use the term the causal agent outside of matter, energy, space, and time? And they said, oh, you can use that term. You can use that. And he said, well, that's who God is. So, you know, I've pretty well gotten away with talking about God today. Amen. So when you think about this, in the beginning was the word, the logos. That's before matter, energy, space, and time. There's Jesus with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. And God said, let us, Elohim, when it says let us make man in our own image, that means that, that God is more than one. He is one, but he is also three in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit had relationship before time even began began but in the vision of God God envisioned you David said when I consider the heavens and the moon and the stars that that you have ordained what is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that you would visit him who am I there's an old song that says who am I that a king would bleed and die for who am I that he would come to this earth that he would leave heaven and come down to where I live. It's the only way that I could understand this concept of God. 
It's the only way was for God, the Son, to put on human flesh, just like I have. The Logos, the Word, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Galatians said, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his Son, born of a virgin. Think about it. Throughout this whole period of time, it said in the fullness of time, when God said, I am going to intervene in space and time. And I'm going to come to where you live. Oh, praise God. Aren't you glad he came to Bethlehem? <clears throat> you see, the, the Apostle John, he traces Jesus' genealogy way past Matthew, Mark, and Luke. He goes all back, the way back to the beginning. He says, in the beginning was this Logos. The cosmic power of the universe was there. And he said the word was with God and the word was God. All things were created by him, everything in the universe. How many of you know he is before all things? The Bible says he's the firstborn of all creation or the unique one of all creation. He says he's before all things, whether they be principalities, power, dominions, or might. He's above all things. And he said that he might have preeminence in the universe. Oh, praise God. Preeminence, that means he's the exalted one. Now, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says, Who, although being essentially one with God the Father, God, the morphe, the very form of God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained. But he stripped himself in order to assume the guise of a servant and that he became like men. And was born a human being. After this, he humbled and abased himself still f further and carried his obedience to the extreme of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God hath highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So I want you to think about it beginning of time and then I want you to think about God saw it from the very beginning until the book of Revelation to the new heavens and the new earth and God said in the midst of all of this he said at just the right moment in time I'm going to create human beings and I'm going to create an opportunity for them to know me God wanted a big family amen Aren't you glad that Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who are weary and are heavy laden, for I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in spirit, and in me you shall find rest for your weary souls. So when I understand who he is, then it gives me rest and peace with God. The more I comprehend who Jesus is, the more I'm at a place of peacefulness with God. Now, Jesus took his disciples up onto the mountain of transfiguration. And when he was on the mountain of Hebron, he began to glow with this radiance. You see, then they saw that he was more than just a human being. They had seen these miracles that he had performed. They never heard of anyone being able to cleanse a leper. To make the blind to see, blind Bartimaeus now was seeing Bartimaeus. You see... They had seen the miracles of the deaf hearing. They had seen people delivered from demons. They had seen all of this. But now they're, they're seeing him as he's glowing with the glory of God. The glory of God wrapped up in human flesh. You see, that's why the Bible says that he humbled himself. He left heaven. He had to lower himself so that he could become our high priest. There's only one way Jesus could be the high priest. And that is because he's a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a type to show us of a priest like an eternal priest. Abraham came and gave his tithes to Melchizedek. And Jesus is the priest because Jesus understands what you go through. He walked the same roads you've walked. He's had the same heartache. He's had a friend betray him, Judas Iscariot. He did this so 
that you could know that you could relate to him when you're going through a trial in your life. Aren't you glad you're talking to somebody who understands where you're coming from? Amen. You know, I think about it. When somebody is going through a difficult time, if I've not been through that experience, I can't fully empathize with them because I've not been through that. But Jesus, hallelujah, I said Jesus, the Lagos, he came and he said, I am going to enter into your situation. It says he's able to save to the uttermost them that are lost. How many of you know he's able to go to the uttermost? How many of you know he found you where you were one day? David said, who am I? Who am I that you would come to where I'm at? Jesus said, I'll leave the 99 sheep to go after that one sheep. And you were that one sheep. You were that one who needed to know who the father was. And so Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the father. You want to know what the creator of this universe is really like? He says, when you've seen me and how I treat people, you see the heart of God, the Father. He said, when you see how when the woman was caught in the midst of adultery and she was known to be guilty, it wasn't a question, and they're ready to stone her. And Jesus shows them the heart of God. They're angry at her for her sinfulness. And Jesus knows what she's done. But he also knows what they've done. And he starts drawing in the sand. And it doesn't say what he drew, but one thing's for sure. Once he drew in the sand... And I think it could have been the sins they had committed. One thing's for sure. He said, now, now, he that's without sin, you cast the first stone at this woman. You see, God took a big mirror and put it up in front of their face. And he said, who are you to condemn this woman? Now, he actually had a right because he was sinless. But he asked her this question after he hears the rocks hitting the ground and the older probably first and then the youngers, younger ones realizing that they weren't able to throw that first stone. And then Jesus looks at her and he said, where are your condemners? He asked her a question. Now, she's trembling because she thinks, She's about to die. The death of stoning. And think of when she said this word. There are none, Lord. The condemnation. There are none, Lord. She was receiving forgiveness, wasn't she? And then Jesus said, and neither do I condemn you. Now, go your way, sin no more, learn your lesson, and receive the grace of God into your life. How many of you are thankful for that grace of God that came to your life one day? When the Lord's grace filled you, and I tell you, all of the condemnation and all the shame that she felt was gone. Hallelujah. In an instant. Why? Because she came into contact with the Logos of God. Hallelujah. In that moment, in that instant of time, she was changed because she had an encounter with the Logos. The Word, hallelujah, that became flesh. How many of you have had an encounter with the Word today? How many of you have had an encounter with the Logos of God? Oh, praise God. I tell you what, I've got to shout. Woo! I've got to shout. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. I've got to rejoice a moment because I've had an encounter. I've looked into his eyes, not physically, but spiritually. And I believe she looked into his eyes that day, Ron. I believe when her eyes made contact with her Messiah she realized that her life was transformed in a moment, in an instant. 
that she would never be the same again because heaven had come down to where she was in that instant. How many of you know heaven's come down into your life? I said heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, glory filled my soul because I had an encounter with the Lagos of God, with something beyond the physical realm, beyond matter, energy, space, and time. Somebody who is beyond that. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. You see, when you begin to understand and comprehend Jesus, you behold him. You know, I remember when Pilate took Jesus and he, after he had scourged him and, and he, put the crown of thorns on his head and, and a purple robe on and says, Behold the man. Behold the man. Remember when I was quoting Philippians 2 and 5. He humbled and abased himself still further. See how he humbled himself. Behold the man that will take away your sins. Remember John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. How many of you, as you were worshiping today, you were just beholding Jesus? You know, everything else, what I love about worship is everything else begins to fade into the background and he comes to the forefront. Just like on that Mount of Transfiguration where all the physical things in nature that were so beautiful before, all at once they were just a dim, dim reality in the light of his glory. There's a song that says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look forth in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace how many of you know that you have beheld his glory oh thank you lord for the revelation of your glory the word the logos became flesh and dwelt among us people could walk up to him because he took on flesh so that he could become your high priest the Bible says, for we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Isn't he able to draw near those who come? He's able to draw near. How many of you know he's drawing near to you right now? He's drawing near to you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's as though I can just go in and, and clutch him and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's that near to me. And you say, well, he lived 2,000 years ago. Yes, but he's eternal. He has always been. He is. And he always will be. Because he is even outside of space and time. He is all and in all. Colossians says in 2.9, In him all the fullness of the Godhead dwells in bodily form. He says that the deity, the Logos, became flesh. Now, Jesus also prayed to his father, didn't he? And he's on the mountain of transfigurations. He, he talked to his father. So his father was looking down at the son. But you see, they're perfect in union. How many of you know that God... The Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, before time began, already had the whole plan of salvation. In fact, the Bible says that your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. God saw me. You see, God is in his eternal power and his omniscience and all knowledge is able to see the whole thing from the beginning to the ending. But he allows it to play itself out because he knows that we all have a free will. He created us to make a decision to follow him. He made us so that we could respond to his love. You see, he wanted someone with a free will that would respond to his love. 
How many of you have responded to his love here today? Oh, I have felt his love, and I'm responding to his love. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. You see, it's something you can experience. Love is something very wonderful, isn't it? It's something you can feel coming from the heart of someone. Some people say, well, love's not even in existence because, you know, there is, we're, we're just nothing on a universe of nothingness. And it's very interesting to listen to people try to explain how that at one time, see, scientists know there was nothing outside. There, there was nothing in the sense of the material universe that we have. And they say, well, how did something come from nothing? In the beginning, God created the word, the communication of God spoke. And the world, the universe, everything came out of God's imagination. And it was all about creating a universe that would redeem you and I so that we could have a relationship with God. Because God wanted a connection with you. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He that opens the door, I will come in and I will sup with him and he with me. Oh, praise the Lord. He's given us an illustration of the way it is. Like, just like if I come to your house, Grace, and I knock on your door and I say, I want to sup with you. You make, you make a goat? You, you say, curry goat. Curry goat. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but I want to come over. And, you know, that implies that he wants to really build a relationship with you. He doesn't just want to see you out from the beginning of the universe. He wants a personal relationship with you. I have a personal relationship with God through the Lagos, Jesus. That's how I can have a personal relationship with the Father. Because I can relate to him as a loving Father. And I can relate to Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, my elder brother. How many of you know you're heirs to God and joint heirs with Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm joint heirs with Jesus. That means that God has said, I want to give you everything that I have. I've created this universe for you to explore forever and ever. Oh, praise God. I tell you what, some people say, why is the universe so big? Well, because you're going to be exploring it forever. God has given us a mind. How many of you know you're created in the image of God today? That you can relate to God. Your spirit can communicate with God. And you don't even have to understand the language to communicate with God. There's a spirit realm where if I'm listening to somebody sing a song in Spanish, my spirit can enter into communion with her and with God at the same time, even though I don't understand what she's saying because I have a spirit inside of me that is tuned in. Amen. God made you to get fine-tuned to him. Amen. How many of you can just think about it? You're a fine-tuned instrument. Just say that. I'm a fine-tuned instrument, honey. Amen. 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 I'm finally tuned to God's wavelength. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? The Bible says the natural man cannot understand the things of the Spirit because they have to be spiritually discerned. The natural mind doesn't understand what I'm talking about. That's the solical part. But the spiritual part can understand because you've entered into a relationship with God and you're having communion with God. You're having fellowship with God and God is revealing himself to you in greater dimensions. Oh, don't you love to learn more about the Lord? He said, take and learn of me. How many of you have learned all you want to know? Anybody here? How many of you know there's more to know? Woo! Behold him. 
I love a song Sandy Patty sings, We Shall Behold Him, then face to face. See, I'm beholding Him in my spirit now, but when I'm in a glorified body, it's going to be able to handle Him. When I hear the trumpet sound and my spirit begins to soar up, hallelujah, then I got news for you. Beloved, it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but when He shall appear, we shall see Him, and we, for, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. In his glory. Oh, would you just begin to praise him? Would you just begin to worship him? Thank him for his glory that's been revealed to you. Oh, praise God. I'm talking about the God who created you in your mother's womb. Who brought a sperm and an egg together at just the right moment in time to make you. Man, I tell you what. You are what God designed and gave you life. How many of you know he's the life giver? Oh, yeah. Woo. Somebody praise the Lord in this house. He's the life giver, the Zoe, the life of God. Hallelujah. I got some life shut up in these bones. Hallelujah. He gave me life. He formed Adam and Eve. He gave them life, created them in his image, and he gave us all life. And then he said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. He said, I wanted you to be a human being that experienced physical life, but he said, I also created you to have spiritual life with me. Amen to relate to me, that God would create us in his image so he could relate to me. Amen. And, and things that he created in me, he, he made me unique. Now, now, I don't want you to say amen to that. <laughs> Boy, you're really unique. <laughs> but he made every one of us unique we're all special to him. He formed us and fashioned us. And you know what? That's why don't put yourself down. Because God created you. Amen. And you don't even have to put up with other people putting you down. Because God created you. Hi, I'm Pastor Phil. I'm so glad you were able to be with us for this morning's service. You know, as you heard the Word of God today, I believe the Holy Spirit has spoken to your heart. He knows exactly what you need in your life. And so, this day, I want you just to receive that living Word and apply it to your life and let the healing presence of Jesus flow into your very being. He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth us. And so, today, let's receive that healing flow and ministry into our life spiritually, emotionally, physically, whatever you need today, we're in prayer for you that God will meet your needs.